Major League Soccer was back after a mid-season break with six electric encounters. We'll have all the thrills and the spills and begin with the LA Galaxy's first ever visit to the Queen City. Life in MLS so far hadn't been easy for FC Cincinnati. And here's a shot, and there's the goal, it's number five. They face the league's most decorated club and a man with a taste for the spectacular. Ibrahimovic looking for the second chance, score! On the bicycle! A sellout crowd at Nippert Stadium were eager to see if their team could spring a surprise. Commentary comes from Matt Jackson and Phil Blacker. Now Scalotto bringing his uh, Galaxy side here, looking to uh, cut the gap to their neighbours, LAFC. Six points in the West. The supported Shield leaders not in action this weekend. He's taking the free kick very quickly and releasing Boateng to deliver the cross. And that was a very early scare for Cincinnati. You just can't give up that sort of opportunity. It's tough as the ball flashes across, it's in a dangerous area. But it's a real threat to that Cincinnati goal. Gamets is uh, six match in charge. Now he won his first, notably against uh, Montreal, his former club. He's lost the four that have followed. As the Galaxy looked for Boateng, and he actually got his foot to that first. He found Spencer Ritchie in the way, but it was a chance. It was. I can't imagine that it would have been given, because it really did look like a foul. He was last man, but nothing given. And here was by Ibrahimovic. Galaxy looked for and find uh, Boateng! Fabulous finish! Well, he took it wonderfully well. A dozen minutes in, and LA Galaxy ahead here, thanks to a first goal of the season from Emmanuel Boateng. Really sharp finish, cross goal, no chance at all for Richie. Galaxy in the mood for more. There's Lejet, neat turn. Boateng certainly in the mood for more, trying to get on the end of that. And it's uh, fired home by Alvarez, it is 2-0. Cincinnati just didn't deal with the danger, they couldn't get it clear. And they're made to play by Fabio Alvarez. His second MLS goal, Galaxy's second goal of the game. Fullbacks the wrong side in the first place, and then the mix up, look at that, no communication. Shot comes in across Rich again, he's got no chance. Looking through defenders who are far too deep on top of him, but should be cleared. Salah crowd trying to uh, digest what has been a fairly torrid first 20 minutes. Very well with uh, Yoa here and delivering uh, in towards Daly the uh, chances for Ledesma. And he couldn't keep his header down. Kicks out in frustration. Yeah, tough chance, does the right thing going in at the far post. This is horrible because it spins up off the surface. Look how it bobbles up in the air off Bingham. And that's a tough one to judge on a surface like this. Exploit the situation from the set piece here. Cincinnati get themselves back into the game. It's the Swiss star Batone to take it in dangerously. Not to melt for a moment there for David Bingham and the Galaxy defence. Great ball in. The only thing you've got to make sure it's on target. They still have hope here. So the owners, the factor in the new stadium and training ground, have committed so much to this side. And the team committed to the attack again, forcing Bingham into a full-end save. He's getting busy, the Galaxy goalkeeper. <laughs> Here is uh, the chance, maybe for the Galaxy to uh, wrap it up straight into the action. Efrain Alvarez, now Ibrahimovic. Alvarez again, Ibrahimovic, it's another good save from Spencer Ritchie, his second in quick succession. Yeah, really good. I like the fact that it's Latan. That's an unselfish side as well, which players appreciate. That's a good save. Save and expect to make, gets himself up quickly. But look at Latan here, you think he's got a chance to shoot there, doesn't. Happy to play the pass and then takes a bit of pace off just to make sure he hits the target with the left foot. 
there is the full-time whistle, which signals the fifth straight defeat for FC Cincinnati, a tenth loss in the last 11. Full-time here at Nippert Stadium. FC Cincinnati nil, LA Galaxy 2. We need to fix again this thing, the first 15 minutes. Uh, two mistakes that cost us uh, two, two goals, so then we, we are behind. But there is a, a lot of positive to take from that, from that performance. So in terms of the positioning, in terms of the movement, in terms of the desire to play, uh, much, much, much better. Still playing catch up in the Western Conference, the Portland Timbers were at Providence Park, where their long-awaited return didn't quite go to plan three weeks earlier. LAFC are gate crashing the Timbers party. They needed to make home advantage count against the Houston Dynamo side, who'd lost their last three on the road. Reflection was awkward, and it's in! Calling this one was Dave Farrer. Ibobisi. Long here for Brian Fernandez. Turns away from Garcia. It's a good save from Willis. Struna completing the clearance, but Brian Fernandez, a real live wire. Floated by Ibobisi. Willis springs well. Here's Villafania. In towards Fernandez. Away there by Garcia, falls for Jorge Marrera. Good block by Boniet Garcia, it's Marrera again! And Willis stuck out a left hand, and I think he got a flick on this. Houston under siege, but here's McNamara for Marlon Hairston, who's got clear! Oh, and he's unlucky. Julio Cascante deflected it onto the post. Baring their teeth for the first time. Voted towards Struna, who went over there under a bit of pressure. Peels for a hand. But Portland able to break, and here's Valeri. Marrera did really well to find him there, and he's continued his run. Marrera with the touchback for Luria! Goal on debut! for Marvin Luria. Wonderful sweeping move down the length of the field. And he finished it well. Just sense that Portland are really starting to play here. There's Fernandez rolled into Valeri. Luria! Fouled by Beasley. Penalty, Alan Kelly. Clear spot kick. So Diego Valeri. Can he make it to Valeri? Thumps it home. Only his fourth of this disappointing season so far. But surely they're on their way to a win. Timber Joey busy. Thomas Martinez to fling the cross in. Again, you know, Portland looking to counter his Chara. Great turn from Valeri. And now it's Brian Fernandez has been outstanding so far. Can he finish? Oh, you bet he can. Fabulous technique here from Brian Fernandez. Put the laces through it. And no chance at all for Joe Willis. Two goals in two minutes. Here's Fernandez again. Such skill from Valeri to set him free. Chara is charging. Willis with the save. Luria. And Willis makes a good double save there to keep it at three. Having got there, Chara will be so disappointed. Chara again, and again they can counter. 
the Larry. Portland now just looking to pick them off. Here's Ibobisi, who's looking to Colwatt. And that is the pick of the goals. Jeremy Ibobisi makes it a perfect day for Sabarese. What a display. The energy, uh, the way the, the players enter into the match, the mentality was very good. That allowed us to be able to have a clean sheet, which is something that we were looking for. And we found the goals in the, in the right moments. Houston's Texan rivals FC Dallas had a hold over their latest visitors. Toronto FC had never won at Toyota Stadium, so slices of fortune were more welcome than ever. Toronto eyes lit up when Brassan and Matt Hedges made a mess of a routine defensive situation less than four minutes in, but the wait for that elusive lucky break could be a long one. The penalty areas at both ends of the pitch felt like the perfect arena for pinball in the first half, but FC Dallas's serendipitous moment also passed without profit. The sharp hands of Quentin Westberg denied Michael Barrios. The goalkeeper was busy again before half-time. Brazilian Bressan accurate at the right end before his swirling effort was flicked away as Dallas's dominance began to show. The breakthrough arrived soon after, and unsurprisingly, it was teed up via a fortuitous deflection. After Barrios's strong run, Jesus Ferreira was ready to celebrate before Dominique Baggi pinched the goal before apologising for the daylight robbery. Toronto thought they were the victims of an incorrect offside decision, an accusation ultimately unfounded. Had Brassan's bravery and speed of thought been matched by Ferreira's finish, They'd have had a second goal just two minutes later. Westberg, the welcome barrier for TFC. Greg Vanny's team were largely second best, though giant openings came their way at the start of both halves. Nick De Leon prevented from scoring an equaliser by the big frame of Jesse Gonzalez. But that was part of a 17-minute period either side of half-time where FC Dallas pulled the rug from under the feet of their guests. Brassan scored his first ever MLS goal before a swift counter-attack led by Paxton, Pomicall and Ferreira was finished off by Baggi for his second goal of the game. A celebration without the need for sheepishness this time either. Toronto weren't just on the ropes, they were bent double over them. Ferreira wasn't short of opportunities to provide the knockout blow either. But while it was Dallas's day in front of goal, it wasn't his. Luchi Gonzalez's side are now 10 matches unbeaten at home against their Canadian opponents, who have Westberg to thank for ensuring the latest loss wasn't as disconcerting as it could have been. Another day where plenty were hungry to be among the Dallas scorers. That first goal, let me see. Uh, hey, I was in the box. The ball came to me. You know, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. If, <laughs> I didn't know if uh, Jesus hit it on target or not. So you know, I just try to get a little touch, make sure it, it make sure it got in. Uh, but don't worry, I'll take care of him. I'll get him a nice steak dinner or so. <laughs> to Mafre Stadium, where the Columbus Crew and Sporting KC were in need of shaking out of slumps that threatened to derail their respective seasons. Right now we have one trophy we're playing for, realistically, and that's MLS Cup. And to get into a position where we can uh, compete for that, we need to be in the playoffs. And uh, we're behind it in terms of uh, points. So we have to take one game as it comes and keep fighting. And, you know, we have three or four home games coming up. So this is going to be pivotal. You have to treat every game like this is our last game of the season. We have quality in the group. and. And for us, we need to be more aggressive and, and have the mindset that we can win every game. We're not happy that we haven't gotten three points in every home game. You know, it's important that uh, the remaining games that we do, can we go unbeaten uh, in the last home games? That, that needs to be the goal. Columbus is always a team that, that we've respected with the way they play. Uh, you know, they have an experienced coach now. It's, it's a new coach with, with Caleb Porter, but um, he has a certain style that, that he likes to play. His teams are always difficult to play against, so that's what we expect. That'll be a tough game like all the games are, but 
I just feel as if this little break that we had with give you guys three days off um, in a row to kind of get away mentally and physically. And I think that that break in there was, was really good for them at this point in the season with us trying to make a push here at the end of the season. We've got some work to do and, and we're running out of time. Um, all we have left is the second half of the season. And so if we, uh, if we don't correct some of the mistakes that we've been making and, and if we're not able to, to figure it out and go on a run, then um, we're gonna be stuck where we're at right now. And, and that's missing out on the playoffs. And that's something that, that nobody wants. David Pratton and Dan Roebuck are your commentators. In comes the corner by Santos. Flick towards the back post. Oh! How on earth did that one not go in from close range? Jim Mullins has to score. Good ball over the place. Well, the SKC here. Really good delivery right into the heart of the six yard box. Really should have been 1 0. Agudo. And still. Arful calling for it, if he can spot him, might not need him. Jimenez, and still, goes for the curler just wide. The crew giving SKC a taste of their own medicine here with the counter-attack. And it's a decent enough attempt, it's just curling away from Melia's goal. Jimenez with a nice little step over. Looks to have slipped, doesn't he, by the time he takes the shot on. And it's Guzman. To send it spinning in. Melia, this is our ball. Melia again. Jimenez charged down. He stood up well in the end, didn't he, Melia? But again, it was another poor attempt at clearing the ball from his six yard box. To chase his own punch out to spread himself as big as possible. Beesla. Shall we? Has got. Plenty of ability. This is Nemeth to control. Here's an opportunity, and it's a scuff shot. This is Gerso still going. Oh, he's gone in. Gutierrez from close range, sporting Kansas City have the advantage. Well, they've done so well to salvage what was an attack that was petering out to nothing. Superb play by Gerso at the very byline. Gutierrez is the man on the spot. There's three. Columbus Crew defenders around him who look completely nonplussed. I don't know why any of them aren't really paying much attention. Literally three yards out, unmarked. Great play by Gerso. Gutierrez getting them off to the perfect start in the second half. Plenty forward for the crew here. Punched away this time by Melia. And then fired back in. Guzman with a shot. Melia with a save. We remain 1 0, but the crew piling on the pressure all of a sudden. This is Shallowy looking to use his pace against Saro. Now it's with Gerso through the centre. Still going, was he brought down? Now then, the referee's got a decision to make here. Harrison Arfel looks. Uh, the referee, the red card is out by the looks of things. Caleb Porter can't believe it. There is the red card. A goal down and a man down. I think from his point of view, it's a genuine attempt, isn't it, to try and win the ball back. There's a red card. I don't think the goalkeeper's getting there if the touch goes beyond a full. I think the next touch, if Gerso is able to stand his feet, is a shot at goal. There's no covering man that's going to get back to be able to be in a position where they can make a recovering tackle. But yet, was that handball claiming it? Joe Williams looking at the referee, Alan Chapman. Nothing doing. He's trying to get his arm out of the way. Intentional no. Close to his body, yes, but still hits the hand. It's not been enough for the Columbus crew. Sporting Kansas City in season. Is it back on track? Well, only time will tell. Full time here, the Columbus crew nil. Sporting Kansas City won. We played well enough, we had enough chances. I counted five or six clear chances. A few of them are tap-ins. And uh, we got to score. We got to score in the first half. If you don't score, put pressure on yourselves. And, you know, I, I think the biggest thing is we gave up an early goal second half.
Next to Canada, where both the Whitecaps and the Rapids were below the playoff line in the West, but that doesn't paint the full picture. Each have found form in recent weeks. Colorado the most vibrant in the early stages, as Zach McMath superbly denied Kai Kamara. The save proved to be in vain. From the corner that followed, the hosts were picked off in a far more simplistic manner. When Diego Rubio occupied a far post position, he wouldn't have expected to be the first player to touch the ball from the set piece. The second goal was something all too familiar. This one was made in Vancouver as former players Nicolas Mesquida and Kamara combined to set up Andre Shinyashiki, the visitors 2-0 up at BC Place inside 20 minutes. The pair were very much making themselves feel at home again as the Whitecaps wilted under relentless early pressure. Kamara was denied by the post and Mezquida by some last-ditch defending, with the Rapids looking every inch aside with one four of their previous five matches. Vancouver needed to dig deep into the reserves to muster a response. South Korean Hwang In Bum offered a tentative sign of a recovery, with Tim Howard grateful to get his hands dirty on an all too straightforward stop. But the gentle warm up was warranted with a far bigger test for the goalkeeper just around the corner. Whether eager or clumsy, Rubio's challenge on Ali Adnan was deemed worthy of a penalty. The look of repent etched across his face ensured the referee knew he'd made the correct call. Freddy Montero's spot kick in first half stoppage time, too good for Howard. And the veteran was unmoved when Jordi Reyna completed the Whitecaps' comeback with 10 minutes remaining. A minor deflection aided the appearance of his free kick as Colorado failed to make their early dominance count. You know, we're disappointed because we were up 2-0 and uh, there's a lot of guys in that locker room that they want to win. And so we haven't won tonight, but you have to keep it in perspective that we've gone on the road, we're keeping our run going and we've got a good hard pop point tonight. Our final game comes from Seat Geek Stadium, where the Chicago Fire look to move on from a run of four MLS games without a win, as well as a US Open Cup exit in St. Louis. RSL had lost their last three in League and Cup, and they fell behind five minutes in when Alexander Katai's free kick beat a frustrated Nick Grimando. Mike Pecky's team came close to equalising just before the half hour when Damir Krylach's header went the wrong side of the post. But after that near miss, they had a much better opportunity four minutes later. When Krylach won another aerial challenge and Mo Adams controlled with his arm. The body position all wrong and Adams paying the price by conceding a penalty. Albert Rushnak slotted home calmly to make it 1-1 with his sixth goal and fourth converted spot kick of the campaign. As the game entered its final 10 minutes, Chicago had a few chances to win it. First, the substitute, Przemysław Frankowski, scooping his effort over the crossbar. And then, just after that opportunity, Katai went looking for his second of the game, but his shot flew across goal. More might have beans and more disappointment for Chicago. I know that there's frustration uh, in the locker room, outside the locker room. Um, you know, we, we expect more of ourselves and we have 17 games to, uh, to make it better. Despite the disappointment, Chicago were the only movers in the East. Their draw with RSL moves them up to eighth. Level on points with Toronto, none of the top six were in action, while FC Cincinnati remain rooted to the bottom. In the West, FC Dallas leapfrog Texan rivals Houston into fourth, while the LA Galaxy solidify second spot behind leaders LAFC. Portland's win lifts them up a place, with Colorado replacing them at the foot of the table. We leave you this week with the Timbers' four-goal thumping of the Houston Dynamo. The Maestro makes it two! Black stays down!
This copyrighted telecast of Major League Soccer may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.